Hello, hello, Tammy Cinematics Gains. I don't know what episode it is, as per usual. I may change it up and just be like, this is season two. <laughs> I've seen a couple people do that. Instead of like numbering their episodes, they're like, this is season two, and they'll give like the date. Maybe I'll start doing that. I'll just give the date and no more episode numbers because then I don't have to remember anything. But then again, half the time, I don't know what the date is. I just know what the day is. So today's Saturday. <laughs> It's February something or other. Um, Monday's the 20th, 1918. It's the 18th. It's the 18th. <laughs> Hello. Tammy Cinematics Gains. I ramble. This is what I do. I lose track of what I'm talking about. I go off on tangents. <laughs> Somebody I was talking to says I might have uh, undiagnosed ADHD. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so yeah, that leads me to life stuff. I am seeing a nutritional counselor who is a dietitian now. Um, I've nixed the old dietitian. We're done. We're done. Um, and I have a new dietitian now and I actually meet with her in person instead of online, which is a little bit of a hassle because it's like a 45 minute drive, but it's fine. It's fine. She was recommended to me because when the old dietitian was like, you want to go more plant-based, you need to see somebody else. I was like, okay. And I did some research and found, I think I told you guys, I found some plant-based dietitians um, that are in the DFW area, but not exactly local to me. <laughs> Nothing's local to me. Um, I live in Venus. I like to say that I live in Venus because it's like I'm on a whole other planet, but um, no, I live in Venus. It's like three miles long and there's nothing out here except a Whataburger and a Sonic that they tell you not to eat at. <laughs> I can't get pizza delivered. <sighs> For those of you in Texas who were like, where's Venus? Midlothian Mansfield. The funny thing about living near Midlothian is I've told you guys repeatedly I'm from Virginia. I've lived in Midlothian in Virginia. So yeah, it's like, I'm still next to Midlothian, which is funny to me. Uh, but anywho, um, <laughs> I was almost, I was going to tell my friends, like when I moved out here, like my friends back in Virginia, it's like, hey, I'm moving to Midlothian to kind of like trick them to think I was coming home because I'm a jerk. Um, see, tangents. <laughs> if you're new here, this is what I do. Uh, you guys that have been here, you know, you know. Uh -huh. Anyway, dietitian. That's what I was talking about. Okay, hold on, coffee. I drank a little bit last night. Not a lot. Like, I have a very low tolerance because I rarely drink, but I had like a couple of peach ciders. They're very good. Um, and I slept real good. So. And I still took my Unisom. I don't know if I was supposed to take that with like having had alcohol. Probably not. But I took it anyway. Uh, cause right now it's still the only thing helping me sleep, which is also related to the dietitian. Let me go into the whole thing. Okay. Dietitian, new dietitian is awesome. She's younger than me, which is kind of weird for me, but I'm at that age now where it freaks me out that people that are younger than me have achieved all these magical things and I'm just here, <laughs> but whatever. Anyway, I like her. We clicked, we talked dogs, we talked movies. She doesn't like horror movies, which is sad for me, but it's fine. I'm not like, ooh, horror movies are the best thing ever. I like horror movies, but for me, a lot of them I find funny and not scary. But anyway, <laughs> so she likes movies. She likes dogs. Apparently another lady at the practice does um, child counseling and she has a therapy dog. So I'm hoping that one day the dog will be there and there'll be a dog chilling with me while I'm talking to the nutritionist and that would just absolutely make my day like sorry little kid can I borrow your therapy dog because dogs um anyway so I really like her so far so far and she doesn't focus on restricting things it's eat you want to eat it I was like but I you know I was doing this and whatever and I really wanted a pizza and because I couldn't get a pizza, I didn't eat anything because I just wanted pizza, right? I do that. And she's like, that's fine. You want something? Go eat it. And I was like, what? <laughs> I want some, I can have ice cream. She's like, if you want something, eat it. And I was like, this doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> but basically her focus is on intuitive eating. So I've got a, I, I had to buy a book 
which is fine. She said I didn't have to buy it and I technically could have borrowed it on my Kindle, but I bought it um, on intuitive eating and she wants me to read some of it and then we're gonna go through some of the um, stuff in our session. So I bought the book, I need to do that. Uh, yeah, so far I like her, I like her. I can eat. <laughs> and And she agrees with me that the kidney stone was likely a combination of the keto diet and not drinking enough water. I'm still weirded out about the not drinking enough water because I drink a crap ton of water. But she mentioned that because I've gained weight, <laughs> I need to drink more water than I'm used to drinking because your water intake goes along with your body size. So yes, I am still drinking water, all the water and some peach cider that I had <laughs> last night. <laughs> just really wanted a drink last night and for me wanting a drink is wanting a cider or what are they called a wit wheat beer whatever the white wheat beer whatever it is that's all it's like when I drink that's what I drink cider and wheat beers <laughs> that's what I like I don't like I don't like alcohol I don't like the taste of alcohol I don't understand the people that drink the different types of liquor and they think they taste different because to me they all taste the same it's like drinking gas. I've never drank gas, but I assume that's what it's like. Yeah. Okay. So, mm, dietitian. Other thing with the dietitian. We are focusing on, um, she suggested some blood work for me to get, and it worked out because I had my physical last week. <sighs> I have never had a bad physical, ever. It's always been, eh, you're a little, like, well, not always, but <laughs> the last 10 years or so, it's been, you need to lose a little bit of weight, but everything looks fine. That, that's, that's what I've always gotten. This time, it was, I have a little bit of concerns about your blood work, and, and because you're 45 now, you have to get a camera up your bum. I talked about this on Instagram, but I was like, what? <laughs> I thought that was a like I thought that was a dude thing, cause you know like guys and what's it called the prostate and all that. I thought colonoscopies were for dudes, or if you had some problems, like if you're female and you had problems with the pooping and the whatnots, <laughs> then you got a colonoscopy. I didn't know it was like a regular thing, so apparently I have to get a colonoscopy as a cancer screening. Camera up my bum. People looking at my bum. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> no. I mean, I'm going to do it because, you know, preventative care. I'm all about preventative care. Um, she did say if I wanted something that was less invasive, she could send me home with like a test kit that I can just mail off. And then I'm like, I'm mailing things through the mail. No. <laughs> like, and it's not as like the actual colonoscopy catches things quicker or sooner and like the the send-off test isn't as it's not gonna pick up like everything because it's not like right there and you know fresh <laughs> I don't know whatever I have to get a colonoscopy I haven't scheduled it yet because then I've always wondered about like do you guys remember that TV show? And it was like Dave Navarro and Carmen Electra. And they went and they got uh, colon cleanses <laughs> together. It's like a couple thing. No. Um, but I've always been curious about doing that. Like going on like a juice cleanse and then do, getting like colon cleanse. And like all, all the inner works are like shiny and spotless in my head. <laughs> whatever let's stop talking about poop yes okay <laughs> anyway so there was that that wasn't a like unhealthy thing to find it was just like hey you're 45 you have to do this now kind of like a lot of my friends are now learning that when you turn like 40 or whatever you're supposed to get mammograms I've been getting them for like 15 years so lucky bastards you got to wait until you were 40 I've been getting smushed for years. Thanks, genetics. <laughs> anyway, so the, the abnormality, which they are concerned about, is my blood in general, is apparently quite thick. And that could be a sign of blood cancer, which I don't think it is. 
I don't think it is. Like I do like ever since my mom and my grandma got cancer, I was just like, I'm going to do everything in, in the world possible to prevent cancer. Like I quit smoking and smoke that much to begin with. I do miss clove cigarettes on occasion. But anyway, <laughs> every now and then when I'm in my super gothy phase, I'm like, oh, a clove cigarette would be so nice right now. Like listening to typo negative. I'm like, oh, clove cigarettes. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not endorsing smoking. So it's bad for you. Um, but like every now and then, like, <laughs> I think, you know, I think about cancer and I'm like, got to do the screenings. I started drinking alkaline water because apparently it prevents things. I don't know if it's scientifically true, but in my head, I'm like, whatever, it's water. I drank alkaline water um, and keep my citrus up because that's another thing like vitamin C. I watched like a like a thing on like vitamin C therapy for cancer. But anyway, I was obsessed with not getting cancer because I saw all the crap my mom went through and I don't want to go through that. And I thought I would have kids and I didn't want my kids to go through that and no kids. Um, I'm not going into that discussion because I'll get upset. But anyway, <laughs> I've been single since 2002. <laughs> There's no kids here. <laughs> I probably can't have them anyway, so it's okay. There, said it done um so anyway so the blood cancer thing is a little scary to me and she's like it's it's a symptom of this but it could be many other things so we'll just recheck your blood work in a little bit to see if it's better <sighs> okay so there was that and then i'm extremely vitamin d deficient like it's super low and I don't know how. Um, I can only assume because the, it's because the only dairy I get is ice cream. <laughs> I mean, I go outside sometimes. I have to go outside to drive, right? I'm not getting enough sun. I don't know. I don't know. My vitamin D is like, and then my thyroid is weird. Like in Virginia, my doctor's like, it's a little on the low side. I think it's called preclinical hypothyroidism is what it's called. So your levels are normal, but they're weird looking. So like, I'm, I don't know if I got it right. It's either the TSH is high and the T4 is low or vice versa, whichever one that is, is a sign of like borderline hypothyroidism. Now my doctor in Virginia saw that and was like, I'm gonna put you on Synthroid to help your thyroid function. My doctor in Texas was like, no pills for you, your levels are normal. Um, even though they're low normal, whatever, no pills for you. <laughs> so I'm not taking anything <laughs> and I haven't been taking anything. And I honestly, I honestly, all this weight gain I've got has been since I moved to Texas. and. Like they took me off Synthroid. They played around with my hormone levels because of my fibroids and whatnot. So I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking my fibroid function is messed up and like people in Texas don't care, but I care. So I talked to the dietitian lady. I was like, would it be cool if I took like a thyroid supplement since I can't, like my doctor isn't giving me the medication anymore. And she's like, yes, do it. So yeah, I'm gonna go back on thyroid supplementation. Um, I'm going to do this intuitive eating thing and I'm going to cross my fingers that my blood work is normal next time. <laughs> and I'm still talking about myself. It's only been like 10 minutes. It's fine. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to um, finally get my headaches checked out because this doctor, I have a new doctor too, by the way. So new dietitian, new doctor in the last week. Um, she is concerned about my headaches, finally. Um, <laughs> I've only been talking about it since I was five. Um, but anyway, I'm keeping a headache diary again so we can try to figure out what my triggers are and if there's anything we can do about them. Um, I know some people get the, the Botox shots or whatever. I'm not doing that. I refuse. Um, no, I don't like what it's made of. I don't want, I don't want it in my body. I don't, I don't want it. Um, <laughs> so, and I've been dealing with them fine all these years. They're just freaking annoying. Um, so we're going to look at that. And if they put me on a medication for that, I'm just going to take it when they're bad. Cause I don't like, 
as I've mentioned to you guys, I don't like taking stuff if I don't need to. Um, yeah. So that's what's up with me. Okay, so 15 minutes, that's not bad. <laughs> Oversharing, hi. <laughs> Let's talk about stuff, yes? Okay, I bought things. Um, I took a break on some things and I made something new. So my, um, what's it called? Deep winter Cardi coat, deep winter coat. Yes, deep winter coat. <laughs> I'm still where I was last time I showed it to you guys. I've done like half a sleeve. I didn't feel like doing cables. Like at first it was I couldn't find my needles because I took them off to do a swatch for something else and then I couldn't find them. <laughs> I lose things. Um, <laughs> I'm actually this because this is a three day weekend and I feel like I have an obligation to do it. I'm going to try to like I straightened up this room, <laughs> but there are still there's a whole other room that I've needed to straighten up since I moved in um because I just put a bunch of boxes in my office I put a bunch of boxes in there and I never sit in my office so I need to go through the boxes and shred some papers and do all that so that is my goal this weekend and I need to deep clean my kitchen not that it's dirty but I've just felt the need to deep clean it for some reason and I want to get dogs I'm gonna go hunting for a um what are they called? A baker's rack to set my toaster oven on because I feel like I want to move it off the counter because I want more counter space because I have a big, I have like a convection style toaster oven and it's like massive. Um, and I want to move it off the counter so I can have that counter space back. Um, the di Oh, the dietitian also suggested, because I like crunchy fried things. Um, <laughs> who doesn't? Um, she suggested that I get an air fryer and my argument is a convection oven is technically an air fryer. That's all an air fryer is, if you didn't know. It's a giant convection oven. It moves air around. That's what convection ovens do. So yeah, the, uh, an air fryer is just a tiny convection oven. That's all it is. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I was like, I have my, I have, I have a toaster oven with a convection setting. Same thing. Um, but the thing is with the air fryer, you have more control. <laughs> And it's like, that's all it is, is a convection oven. It's not also an, another kind of oven. So mm, whatever. Uh, it's more compact and whatnot. I don't know. I can't logic and the things. I haven't looked at it in detail. I just know that an air fryer is a convection oven. That's all it is. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I think it's a more focused convection oven. So I'm thinking about getting an air fryer. I'm almost done talking about myself, I swear. <laughs> I wanted to ask. I need you guys to comment more. I like comments. Although for some reason it doesn't email me when you guys comment anymore. So I have to like go in and check and see if there's been comments. So I might miss comments sometimes because of that. I can't figure out how to fix it. I've tried to fix it. It's not working. Uh, but anyway, suggestions. If you have an air fryer, please tell me what you like and don't like about it and what brand it is. Cause I'm maybe gonna buy one. And I also keep seeing this video on Instagram about these Parmesan potatoes and oh my God, I want them. And they're done in an air fryer. So yes, if you have an air fryer and you like it, let me know. If you have an air fryer and you don't like it, let me know. I need to figure out what brand I wanna buy. Okay, so yes, that. Um, <laughs> off topic. I was talking about the deep winter coat and somehow ended up talking about air fryers. Um, <laughs> how did we get there? Anyway, cleaning air fryers. I don't know how we, I lost my needles. That's how we got there. <laughs> my brain. Anyway, <laughs> like, whatever. It's, it's fine. Um, anyway, <sighs> it's 20 minutes talking about myself. Um, Yarn, yarn, okay. Projects, I have no finished objects. Um, plan was to knit from stash. So what I did <laughs> is I looked through all my patterns and I was like looking at my yarns and I had some Madeline Tosh Farm Twist, which looks like this. And this is the colorway that was specially dyed for Juju Knits here in Fort Worth. 
um, ladybird. It's named for, what's that chick? Lady Bird Johnson, Lyndon B. Johnson's wife. Apparently she was from Texas. Anyway, it was named for her. She did a lot of like conservation stuff. I thought it was named for the movie and I was confused because I don't like that movie. But anyway, I had bought that and I was going through my stash and I had this skein, the black, uh, bluish purple and uh, green, greenish blue. <laughs> so let me find them. So yeah, I had a black, bluish purple, greenish blue. So I had these and this one. So I had these and was like, I'm gonna make something with these. What do I have in my Ravelry library that will work for these? And I found a pattern and I was like, I will use that. But the pattern calls for heavy worsted, I believe, I think. And those are DK. But I was like, whatever, I can do some maths and I will use it anyway and make this super cool sweater. Cause originally I was gonna make a sweater very similar to what it looks like on the pattern because I like the whole rainbow vibe but I was gonna mix it with what I was gonna do <laughs> is rainbowy colors and black and mar marl them and make this sweater that's what I was gonna do but it's the vintage and variety sweater focus there we go isn't that cute? The rainbow vibes? That's what I meant to make. <laughs> but trying to work from stash, I was like, eh, I will just use this farm twist and do that. So I did. And I bought more yarn. <laughs> I bought one more skein of yarn to throw in. I wanted a purple, so I got this one. So my other farm twist is, I have a bunch of this. Um, this is 11 light. 11 light, I got it. 11 dark, light, dark, 11. Stranger Things. Okay, so this is Stranger Things yarn, and I was like, I'm gonna make a sweater with this one. So my goal is to make a sweater with this one. It's just like a neutral base with speckles. See the little speckles? And it's lightly speckled, which I love. So I'm gonna make a sweater with this one. But yeah, so I bought 11 dark, because it was a purple, to go with the speckles that are in the Ladybird yarn. Um, so I have... I think I have like six skeins of this. Anyway, it is gonna be a sweater. But I did this. <laughs> and I bound it off last night, but now I'm having second thoughts. Um, one, I'm not feeling the black as my last stripe. I think it, cause like all the other colors are kind of variegated a little bit. And then the black is just black, you know? It's like solid. So I feel like it looks weird. There, that's better. See what I mean? Like these are all like, anyway. And so basically you knit the whole thing on a bias. And then when you get to the end, you do short rows to fill the sides in so then they even out on the bottom edge. Um, but again, I wasn't sure which color to finish off with because I feel like it looks weird to have like the stripe on the side and then you're finishing off with a whole different color. So I'm thinking maybe I should have finished off with the speckle instead of the black because it looks weird. I'm also thinking maybe I should have gone a little bit longer so made the speckle a full stripe and then bound off the sweater. I don't know. I'm having second thoughts about the bottom, 
But while I think about that, I'm going to go ahead and start on the sleeves. So yes, this is my vintage and variety sweater. It's cute. Um, if you look at it on Ravelry, the projects, the neck is wider. <laughs> so it sits further back, which I really liked. But I think that is due to me using DK instead of Aaron. Like it doesn't lay the same. Um, but the gauge, the maths I did for the gauge works. So it fits fine. It's just the neck isn't as wide which it's not a big deal. But yeah, I'm second guessing the bottom. I don't know, thoughts? <laughs> what would you do? Um, would you take this black off and redo it in the speckle? I won yarn chicken. So this was one full skein of the speckle to do, what is it? One, two, three, four stripes and then the short rows. So that was one full skein of that yarn. So I wasn't sure, cause even though I did the math to make this work, I wasn't sure how much yarn I would need. And I wasn't sure like what order I was gonna do the stripes in. So I actually bought more of the speckle. Um, so yeah, if I need to continue it, I just have to crack open a new skein and continue. I don't know what y'all well I'm gonna have to crack open the skein anyway to do the sleeves so I would have enough to continue well obviously I have two of them I have enough to continue um and when I went to Juju's to get that I got another skein of just a plain blue um so I could add just a plain blue stripe that's not as variegated as I don't because this blue has like purples and stuff in it and this one doesn't. Um, so, or I could go buy another skein of another color of Farm Twist to add one more stripe and take out the black. I don't know, you guys. What do you What do you think? What do you think? This hits right at my waist, you know, tall. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm thinking of continuing it further. I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but this is my whip, my current whip. Um, I knit up really fast. So if you do that pattern, um, especially if you do it in the yarn weight that it's called for, it's going to finish really quickly. Um, what's it called for? Hold on. Where's the yarn thing? Oh, here we go. It originally called for a uh, yarn called Big Birdie, which is 79% alpaca, 21% silk, and it's like 174 yards. So yeah, Aaron weight, um, Aaron bulky, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. While gauge may be achieved with other yarns due to the unique nature of Big Birdie, yarn substitution may affect the size and shape of the piece. So yeah, shaping with the neck thing. I don't know, I, still, I think it looks fine. I think it looks fine. I'm just not, not feeling the bottom. I'm thinking I might wanna make it a little bit longer before I do the side short rows, but then I would have to get another stripe cause I'm not feeling the black. I don't know, what do y'all think? I don't wanna change up yarns cause this farm twist, I think it's the only yarn I have that has that twist to it. I think. Well, unless I use, no, that's my special yarn. That's my color changey yarn. Yeah, that's the only yarn I have that has that twist. I'm just double checking the stash. <laughs> yeah, that's the only yarn I have that has that twist. What do y'all think? Should I go hunt around for another another skein? Let's see, what color would I use? Because I did it like trying to go darker as I went down. Maybe the black is fine and it's just me. I think it probably would look better if it was like a charcoal mixed with a black. Maybe I should buy, buy a 
natural skein and dye it. I mean, what would my other color be? Navy? I don't know. I'm not happy with the bottom. And then I'm also thinking maybe I just leave it like I don't do the short rows and I just leave it pointy and just make it a little bit longer and then it's almost like a tunicky style. But then I'd have an arrow on my butt and that would look weird. <laughs> Unless I just did the short rows in the back. I don't know. What do y'all think? Have I been talking about this for too long? I feel like I have. That's my only knitting whip. Spinning! Got a little ahead of myself. So I took my spinning class, I showed you guys my yarn and I was like, I'm very happy with this yarn. Okay. So I whipped out the machine and <laughs> was like, I got, I, I got it figured out now. I'm gonna do the e-spinner, right? And I spun this up. I want it in my coffee, hold on. Focus. I spun this up. It looks semi all right, right? There was more on here, don't judge me. And I spun this up. <laughs> and then I tried to ply them together. And that's where half of the yarn disappeared and turned into this. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I'm thinking I don't know what I did. I was trying to ply them on the machine. And they don't, they wouldn't twist. Like first I thought I was doing it in the wrong direction cause they wouldn't twist together. Okay, they wouldn't stay together when I took, like they did that. So I thought maybe I was twisting them in the wrong direction cause you know, S and Z. So I twisted them in the other direction and they started coming apart which told me that was the wrong direction. So I went back <laughs> to the other direction that I had started in and they started twisting together, but they weren't no elasticity at all. So I feel like I screwed this up. Um, I more feel like this one's probably screwed up than the gray. So I'm thinking I might wind some if I figure out how to do it I might wind some of the gray onto another oh I can do it with a machine wind half of this onto another bobbin and then ply the gray to itself and then I think it'll be fine maybe it was trying to apply maybe I spun this one in a different direction than this one is what I was thinking but when I look at them they look like they're spun in the same direction so I don't know what I've done, but I'm mad about it. <laughs> so I went back to using the Turkish spindle. And did I show you guys or did I only do it on Instagram? I think I did it on Instagram. So when I took my class, I think I showed you guys, they gave me like two little... Well, they gave me like a, a thing of undyed fiber. I dyed it um, since I didn't use it for my class. I used that uh, Malabrigo yarn. So I dyed it. Oops. And I missed, I missed a little chunk here, but I didn't felt it. Uh -huh. And I dyed this. There wasn't a ton of it left. Um, so, cause yeah, I dyed this grass in it, dogs. Um, I dyed this and decided to spin it on the Turkish and I'm doing it on, I, I might have, it looks like fingering weight to me y'all. I think and it looks consistent too, which is awesome. Um, if I do it right, Sorry, my hitch came undone. And that's what it looks like. So yeah, meh, there we go. Wah. <laughs> so yeah, now I'm spinning it on here and then I'm gonna do the hand plying it 
the way they taught me in the class to do, which is going to take ages. Um, and maybe that will give me a yarn that I can use. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So, yeah. And since I was feeling myself that I didn't felt it, I've ordered two or three. I've ordered two or three bundles of superwash roving from Knit Picks because I don't want to ruin anything like nice. Um, to dye and spin. Hopefully it works out. Um, <laughs> I also, I found, um, when I took my class, the teacher mentioned, um, a dyer on Etsy that dyes Rolex and I decided to check them out just to see what, what, what they had. And they had one called Falcor. So I bought it. Um, it should be here next week. <laughs> I hope. I think. Yeah, I think it's supposed to come on Tuesday. So I'll have more fiber to spin. And that'll go in my stash of fiber that I'm not touching until I'm better at this. Um, but it's called Falcor. I had to buy it. Um, so yes. What am I looking for? Oh, when I dyed that fiber, I dyed a skein of yak yarn because I was afraid that I would use too much dye and I would have trouble rinsing it out. So I put this skein of yak in there to soak it up. It's pretty. Uh, it's gonna be socks, of course. Um, what am I looking for? Oh, fiber, fiber. When I, 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 um, <laughs> I went shopping. So last weekend I was really bored and felt like going for a drive. And since I was going for a drive, I was like, let me drive out to Quixotic Fibers. Uh, Cause they have fiber there. And um, I was driving anyway. And I was like, I don't have anywhere to go. Cause you know, my friend that I like, normally when I'm like, I need to go on a little road trip to like, I used to enjoy driving until I moved out in the middle of nowhere and have to drive all the time. But <laughs> Usually I would just drive to Colleen and visit my friend. And um, <laughs> since that is no longer an option, I was like, I'm just gonna drive, you know, go to Quixotic. Cause it's like an hour and some change to go out there. Um, it's over an hour. Cause it's an hour for me to get to McKinney. So like an hour and a half. I don't know. It's like driving to DC almost um, from Richmond. So <laughs> I went to Quixotic Fibers. Uh, cause that's where I got my e-spinner and my, um, fiber samples. And I was going to see if they had black, more of the black. Anyway, what they did have is Rambouillet. So I got a bag of Rambouillet. Look at that. You just see how soft it did look. I'm not touching this. <laughs> I'm not gonna touch it until I'm super comfortable with dyeing fiber and spinning it. And then I'm gonna dye myself some ramble in. So this is just gonna go in the stash, in the fiber stash, which I need to reorganize. Now that I've cleaned out my, cleaned all the yarn out of the closet, I can put all the fiber away on my bin. Um, so yeah, I got some Rambouillet. And while I was there, Quixotic Fibers has life and long grass. So I got some. Um, cause I think I've told you guys, if you're new here, I like life and long grass yarn. So I got some. <laughs> I got a bit. And then I got some Malabrigo that I hadn't seen before. And then I got a skinny yarn <laughs> to go with the skinny yarn I already have. I was bored. All right, so if you've been with me for a very, very long time, like from the beginning, don't watch that episode. You'll remember that I bought this the first time I went to Quixotic Fibers. Stay. This is Dream in Color Cosette. No, Suzette. <laughs> Cosette. There is a Cosette, but this is Suzette. 
and I bought this skein of yarn and I haven't done anything with it because it was the only skein I had in this colorway and I don't have anything well in this not colorway well yeah it is it was the only skein I had in this colorway and in this fiber content it's 50 silk 50 merino and <laughs> sport weight I didn't have anything else in this fiber content and every time I went back to Quixotic Fibers, I couldn't find a colorway that I thought looked good with it. Um, so <laughs> they had more um, when I went this time. So I got a second skein of it. So now I have two. So yes, now I have two. <laughs> so I feel like Feel like we can do something with this now i have two of them so i bought a second skein of this and i can put this away because i've already i already have a picture of it Ugh, okay i don't want to shove things make them fall down all right about that i bought uh, malabrigo that i did not have quixotic fibers sticker um, I, I did not have this Malabrigo. This is the Carnival colorway. And this is in Arroyo, which is their like sport DK. I just thought it was really pretty. Yeah, I see the yellow. I see it. But it's like, it's like muted almost because of the other, the, the darker tones in it. So it's goldish. I don't know. Something about this said by me and I did. Um. I need to take a picture of this. <laughs> you guys are like, you need to take a picture of it. What? All right. So <laughs> I have not updated my stash in Ravelry, but I took all the pictures to do so. Um. <laughs> See? <laughs> When I'm bored, I do things. So I took all the pictures of my stash. So yeah, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Anyway, so I need to take more pictures. I also downloaded a new app by, um, it's somebody that also has a podcast. I don't know, people know them. Um, Caleb, is it Caleb? I don't remember. It's a yarn stash app. And it's probably on my phone. It's on my phone, so I can't show you. But other people have shown other people have shown it. Um Michael, uh Peace Peace for Peace, um is the one that I saw uh had mentioned it on their on their podcast so I downloaded it from that and then I just saw it on Thursday on the grocery girls podcast so it's like a stash tracking thing so I'm gonna see if it's easier to load my stash pictures on that or like I hope there's like a bulk thing <laughs> it would be lovely if there was like a bulk upload so I can upload all the pictures at once but it's probably not that's why I haven't like sat down and done it on Ravelry because it's gonna take me forever um but yeah, I think it's like five bucks, but it's a yarn stash app. Um, and I figured that app would be good to have because I think there's like a Ravelry knockoff app or something. I don't, is it an official Ravelry app? But I don't know. Apparently it's like kind of glitchy. I don't know. Anyway, so I got this yarn stash app <laughs> to better help me when I go shopping. And it'll be on my phone. So it's just more convenient than like, and like if it's in that app, I have to double check to see if the app works without internet. Cause then like, if I have something somewhere, cause half the time, a lot of the stores here, I lose phone reception in some places, Verizon. Um, I think Texas is more T-Mobile, whatever. I don't like T-Mobile. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I lose reception a lot, especially like McKinney Knittery. I never have good reception in there. So like when I'm yarn shopping, I can't like pull up my Ravelry stash half the time. So if I have something else I can pull up my stash on, that's more convenient for me. <sighs> okay. Um, back to the yarn buying. Life in long grass. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I bought, I bought a bit. There was another skein of um, Dream and Color Cosette, which is their DK that I was going to buy, but somebody else bought it or, or somebody else needed it for a project and I didn't really need it. You know, I just liked it. So I was like, eh, whatever, it's fine. Um, <laughs> but I did buy one skein of Dream and Color Cosette. And I believe this is for their color pooling. I'm not going to use it for that. Like, and it's funny that color pooling is a thing because I was dyeing yarn that could technically be pooling yarn, but I thought that might be a bad thing. So I stopped dyeing it that way, but now like everybody's into it. So I might dye a couple skeins of pooling yarn. Um, anyway, come on, come on. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Green and silver. I don't know. I liked it a lot. Um, I only bought one though. This is a, uh, ooh, I didn't realize. I need to start paying attention to my fiber contents when I grab skeins. I'm like, ooh, this is pretty. Keep telling you guys, impulse buyer. Um, This is MCN. So I have to pair it with MCN, right? Mm. Do I have green MCN? No. Mm hmm. What's the space? Oops. Seventy twenty. What's the space? Is eighty twenty. I don't know. Whatever. It's fine. Uh, go back in there. It was pretty. I bought it. Here we go. Okay. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I need to take a picture. Okay. Life in long grass. Here we go. I keep saying that. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Okay. I don't know what. All right. Maybe a shawl. There is a shawl I want to make that has like flowers or something on it. I don't know. But it's a fade. <laughs> or I picked it out to be a fade. I don't know if it's going to work. And then I got an extra skein of one of the colors because I just thought it was really pretty. But when I bought this, I was like, this is a fade. Do I make it a cardigan or a shirt or a shawl? I don't know. But it's a five skein fade. And don't suggest Stephen West patterns to me because honestly, they're all pretty and whatnot, but I'm not going to use them. And I, I need to make more things I'm going to use. So this is Grace Lake. Like Grace Lake. Okay, it's that one. This is Cauldron. And with a name like Cauldron, I had to buy it. This is Dark Truffle. All right, all right. This is another skein of Dark Truffle. So I have two skeins of Dark Truffle. Okay. And this is Mirakai. Which is funny because I believe I have Mirakai, but it's on a different base. Yeah, I do. I have Mirakai on a different base. But uh, that was a really pretty five skein fade. Because even though these are both dark truffle, one has more silver in it than the other one. Focus, focus. There we go. See, like this one has more silver than this one. So. Huh? And you know what? Uh, did I put them away yet? I don't think I put them away yet. The yarn I bought. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Dropping. Oops. <laughs> Let me knock over everything. Um, what's that yarn I bought? Pashmina? I did put it away, didn't I? I thought I bought a light one though. Oh, I did, I did. I just couldn't quite turn around. I'm not that skilled. Okay, Pashmina is 75, 15, 10, but I mean, it's still got that content. It's got silk in it, so. Oh, maybe I can make a cardigan. And then I think this is Pashmina too. Yeah, those grays I bought the other day. 
You guys, I can make it work, but what am I gonna make? <laughs> Screenshot. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna make. I don't know what I'm gonna make. Um, where's Mirakai? Mirakai, okay. So this is Mirakai, on, and this is the, the 8020 is the moon base. Moon base, ha ha ha. All right, of uh, Life and Long Grass. So this is Mirakai on the moon base. And just so you guys can see the difference. So I'm not crazy. I've had this for ages and haven't used it. This is Mirakai on the fine sock base. Come on, focus. There we go. See the difference? See how dark this is compared to this one? Yeah, it's better. See? I've had this for forever. I just don't know what I want to use it for. And I bought oxidized to go with it. So I thought it was cool again. But now I want to put oxidized with like these colors. So I think that looks cool too. Anyway. Now all the yarn's on the floor. <laughs> It's in a basket, it's fine. Um, <laughs> yarn club. So I told you guys I joined a, a yearly club and I just joined, <laughs> paying off my credit card makes me happy. Um, <laughs> so I used to be a member of the Knit Crate Malbrigo Club and Knit Crate is no more as you guys are probably well aware. But Jimmy Beans Wool now has the Malabrigo Club. So I joined that. Because um, it's basically the exact same as my Knit Crate Club. But it comes now, uh, theirs is going to come with an O Snap bag and stitch markers. So that's cool. With my Knit Crate one, I knew I was going to get the yarn. I don't know, like. There was usually like one extra or something in there and like you guys know knit crate extras weren't that great like mostly they started getting better and then they went away so <laughs> i joined the malabrigo club which i believe the first shipment is in march so we'll see what happens um with knit crate one of my shipments was rasta which i didn't use so there might be some Malabrigo going into the uh, prize bin. I don't know. But I like Malabrigo mostly, so I figured it'll be okay. And I can rationalize it. Like, I just paid this credit card off. So just putting this one year of Malabrigo quarterly is fine. Because <laughs> I have an entire year to pay off my annual subscription of Malabrigo. Because I'm not going to touch that credit card again until next month because <laughs> Theo's having his dental and th that credit card is for it's supposed to be for veterinary expenses so yeah Theo's got to have his dental and actually you know he's got blood work next week so I'll use that credit card next week to get his blood work and then to pay for his dental procedure although I think my annual raise will kick in so I might not have to use my credit card we'll see what happens anyway Yarn Club. This is the Lamb Strings Gothic Color of the Month Club. So this is Jan this is January because they ship them at the end of the month. So it's cool. I'll never be spoiling it because it's February now. I knew I would like it. This is familiar. I got the DK Club. <laughs> so it's like purpley gray. It's really pretty. I like it. This is the Utopia DK, which is 100% superwash merino, four ply, 231 yards. And the colorway is familiar. Oh, look, it matches my sweater. I've been in a purple mood lately. What is up? You would think my favorite color was purple and not blue. 
I mean, technically black and gray are my favorite colors, but you know, I like blue. But I've been buying a crap ton of purple. Granted, this one was a like mystery. I don't, I didn't know it was gonna have purple in it, but it does. So yeah. But yeah, look, it matches all of these. <laughs> and that, my friends, that's that's the yarn bits. Um, yeah, that's it. I don't think I. Have, oh no, that's not it. That sweater I showed y'all. <laughs> the sweater I found that had it was the the three. Hold on. I showed it last time, like towards the end of the episode. Like I'd come across this sweater and I wanted to make it. And now it's not in here. <laughs> oh, this thing, I swear. I'm trying to figure out how to get my iPad to stop blogging me out every time I close a window. Um, where'd it go? I just bought it. It's in my library, right? Oh, no, 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 no. It's in my iBooks because it's not on Ravelry. Okay, yes, 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 memories. The Gansevoort, this sweater that I showed y'all last time. Well, I was going through my stash and I was like, I could technically do it in these colors because I have so much purple now, right? Um, not that I have room to put any purple away, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> I was gonna do that sweater in some Clinton Company. Oh man. The tag got stuck, so I unround the skein. <sighs> this is why I shouldn't have yarn packed in there like I do, but it's going to stay like that until I use it. It's fine. So, okay. So I got my Quince and Company Black Chickadee. And then I had some Malabrigo Finito, which I still don't understand why the places in Texas carry every Malabrigo except Finito. This is so nice. Why don't y'all carry this one? Anyway, so this is Malabrigo Finito in the Mar Marte colorway, and I love it. The Finito is like, it's basically like chickadee heather. <laughs> it's so soft. Um, Cause it was one of the ones I found on like yarn sub that's, that was similar to chickadee, anyway. say it doesn't say all right so this is 100 american wool which is that's fine this isn't chickadee heather though this is regular chickadee Hold on. what's regular chickadee heather chickadee heather is oh damn it uh. okay so chickadee heather is 100 organic wool and this is just american wool so probably not organic i don't know whatever it's fine <laughs> So anyway, point being, the Gansevoort sweater, I was going to use the Black Chickadee Heather and this Malabrigo uh, Finito in the Marte colorway as my stripe, which I thought was really pretty. Um, or I have a bunch of Finito in the Dewberry colorway, so I could use the black and the purple. Was a thought. Still a thought, still thinking about it. This actually does look kind of cool together. I don't know. But I wanted, originally I was like, I could do this, but I really like this. Point being, I only had two, these are 50 gram skeins, I only had two. So I needed to get some more. And I had to hunt for it online because they don't carry it in any of the yarn stores in Texas, locally. But I knew that Circle of Stitches had it because that's where I got all my Dewberry yarn from. So she had two skeins left of the Marte colorway and they were on sale. So I bought them and look at that, yeah. So I've got my Marte colorway. So I've got enough of that. And since it was on sale, she had a bunch of the natural in the Finito. And I like this yarn, it's you guys. Can you feel the softness through the screen? Look, 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 look. Squish. Squish. 
squish <laughs> with the sound effects squish <laughs> so i bought enough natural to dye squish <laughs> and i mean technically i could put the natural with the marte for stripes right right anyway i bought it because it was on sale and i could dye it and it would be on the space which is super soft so I bought that <laughs> and that's it. That's all I bought. That's all I bought. Um, so yeah, I have that fiber coming. Uh, I have anything else. <laughs> oh, I ordered Lola bean city. So nice. They named it twice, whatever it's called. She has a sock set. I bought that. But I want to say that it was a three-week pre-order or something. So I got that. Um, Lollipop Yarn had a shop update. I bought one one ball of self stripey. Yeah. I mean, I'm still going to try... Stash. <laughs> I'm still going to try to work from stash and buy less. I swear. I swear I'm going to try to buy less. Um, plus I don't want to like get my credit card back up to where it was. Cause whoo, <laughs> whoo, not again, not again. Um, credit cards for traveling purposes. Cause the only reason I even got a credit card was because like I needed one to rent a car. That's the whole reason I even got a credit card to begin with. And then I bought another, well, I didn't buy, I got another credit card for veterinary expenses. So I have two credit cards, one's for the vet and one's for traveling, but I've been using it for traveling and buying yarn and all the things. So I'm trying to be better, trying to be better. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for the yarny stuffs. Um... I gave you guys like a whole 20 minute life breakdown I'm trying to get my health back in order. Um, doctor wants me to lose 30 pounds. <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, what else is there? Movies? Guys, I haven't been in the movie theater in forever. And I feel weird about it because like that used to be my thing before I started knitting. And um, I still love movies, but... I don't feel like going to the movie. Like now that I've got like gotten used to the streaming and whatnot, like I don't need to go to the movie theater. Like I love the movie theater. Like I love fresh popcorn and just the dark and the loudness and the giant screen. But then I'm like, you know, <laughs> I could save some money and sit on my couch in my jammies and <laughs> make some popcorn myself. And just, yeah, so I've been in the movies in a bit. Like. I need something to make me want to go to the movie theater at this point. Like, I have to really want to see a movie on the big screen. And the only thing I can think of right now is when Dune comes out, part two of Dune. I'm going to see that in the movie theater. And maybe the Evil Dead sequel. But that's all I really feel like going to the theater to see. Like, everything else, I'm like, I'll just wait. <laughs> I meant to see the Black Panther sequel in the theater, but I didn't. I waited until it came on Disney Plus. So I watched that. Pretty good. Makes me want to dive some colorways. Um, and then uh, one of you guys was sending me pictures of African uh, fabrics and like, hey, here's some dye inspiration because I don't think they knew I only dye for movies. But technically, <laughs> I just need to find movies where people are wearing African prints and I could technically dye uh, for that. Um, so I was thinking about doing like a Black Panther, like African colorway inspiration. I was already considering doing a um, Coming to America collection. I already had like the plans in my head, but then I was dying one colorway and it didn't turn out like the way I pictured it in my head. So I kind of put it on pause. Um, and then I watched The Woman King. Viola Davis, man, she's amazing. Um, but anyway, just the beginning, the first couple minutes of the movie when she takes that machete or whatever it's called and just puts it behind her head, like, 
What's up? I was like, yes. <laughs> and I was like, screenshot, I need a picture of this. I'm gonna dye yarn for her. Um, so I'm gonna do like woman king yarn at some point. I'm just trying to figure out how I wanna do it. Like, do I wanna do it in like their practice gear? Or do I wanna do it based on that picture? Or do I just wanna do Colors of Africa in that movie? I don't know. It's in my head, it's in my notebook. It'll happen at some point. I don't know when, cause my brain is just like all the time. Um, so yeah, I watched Wakanda Forever, <laughs> I watched Woman King, I watched season nine of Alone. I don't know why I love that show so much. I am against hunting. Like, I grew up with hunters in my family. My grandpa goes turkey and deer hunting. I just, I don't believe in it. We don't need to hunt. <laughs> Like, I understand, like, you know, the hunters have this thing, like, oh, it's population control, but it's not a necessity. You can go to the grocery store and get some food. You don't have to go out there and kill it. Like, there's no reason for it. Said what I said. Um, I will say that wild turkey, hunted wild turkey that my grandfather killed did taste a hell of a ton better than that store-bought crap butterball, but... It's the principle of the thing. <laughs> my grandpa was also one of those people that tricked me. Um, Cause I was like, I, I'm not gonna eat that because you killed it. Like I refuse. So he tricked me by making lasagna, which he knew I loved with deer meat, which I ate a bunch of. And then he was like, guess what was in that? And just ruined my life. <laughs> there are things I like, like lamb is delicious. I'm not gonna eat it though. Like. <laughs> I'm weird like that. Um, bunnies. I, I'm weird about things like that. I don't, we don't need to kill things. But anyway, so <laughs> I love the show alone. Here's what I don't understand though. And I guess it's because it's me and I'm always alone. <laughs> the people that are just like, I can't take it. This like, I need my people around me. I'm so like, I, I need these people. Like, I, I'm not that person. If it wasn't for the hunting aspect of alone, I would freaking win y'all. I can spend every single day by myself and have done. And I'm fine. I don't need like, I, hi everybody. I love ya. <laughs> Glad we're cool. But I don't need people. So I feel like I could win alone. If I didn't have to hunt, <laughs> I could win that show. But anyway, I love watching that show. And then I get all grossed out by like half the crap they eat. It's just funny. Anyway, I binge watched season nine of Alone. And then I binge watched. What? Here's my thing. All right. So <laughs> you know how some people get. All right. If you watched Alone, you know how some people get kicked off. Like they have their med check and they're like, mm, you're too skinny. You have to go. All right. So on this last season, not to spoil anything, but one dude fasts, where, where was his med check? Like, I'm pretty sure he wasn't eating. He had to be as skinny as the dude they kicked off on med check. Like, how do they know when to do the med check? Like, do, do they send like updates to the, the producers? Like, this is where I'm at right now. Like, do they just like upload that? And then the producers are like, we're gonna do a med check cause you look a little rough in that last video you sent. Is that what they do? Cause then I feel like the guy that was fasting, maybe he like bulked up <laughs> his clothes and stuff. So he didn't look as skinny as he probably was cause he wasn't eating. Anyway, I could win alone if not for the hunting. I could win it. I can be alone. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be in the middle of the woods like, let me see if this grass knits together. <laughs> I'd be that person like carving knitting needles. <laughs> Stra strapping like, like, like sticks together to make like a square. Like, hey, I'm watching TV. <laughs> I can win it. I can win it. I talk to myself a lot. Oh, I do that now. So <laughs> I could win alone. I could if, you know, I have to kill stuff anyway all right so I watched that and then last night I binge watched Red Rose or whatever that Rose show that just premiered on Netflix I watched the whole thing because I was drinking last night and I have anything better to do so I watched that it wasn't bad um yeah I tried to watch the latest season of you 
I feel like they should have stopped at season one. Like I read the book, the book's okay. The second book is god awful. It was a slog to get through. Um, but like I read the first book of the U series and it wasn't bad. And one of my friends gave me a hard time for liking the TV show because I guess it was triggering for her. It's not triggering for me. I can separate fact from fiction. Like I know there are stalkers out there and people that kill people and like I'm not gonna, it's a TV show. So <laughs> it didn't bother me um, as it bothered her. But anyway, the first season, good. The second season, okay unnecessary but okay the third season I'm having a hard time getting into I've watched like two episodes and I'm like I'm bored with this like I think they should have just stopped but I'm probably gonna finish it because I have a thing I have to finish a series kind of like Game of Thrones like I knew the last season was crap but I kept watching it because I had to finish it um <laughs> and I'm still mad about it every time I get the urge to watch Game of Thrones again I'm like oh I have to watch the last season too oh and I've been watching 80s horror movies because um, I watch movie, um, what are they called? Where they do like the movie list, like greatest horror movies of all time, whatever, blah, blah. So there's a series called, I think it's called Into the Darkness. And this is like their third one. So I watched all of that and saw a bunch of 80s horror movies that I'd never seen. Because like growing up, my grandma let me watch horror movies, but my mom did not. So I missed a lot of horror movies from like back, back in the day. So I've watched them recently. <laughs> so they don't hit as well as they did for like people that saw them back then and were like, oh, this movie's great. For me, it's like, oh, I'm just watching that now. And the, uh, <laughs> it's like 2020 and like 80s movie. Mm, some of them don't hold up well. So I don't get them as much as people that watched them back then. But anyway, I'm still watching them because I don't have anything better to do. I watched one called something Nightmare Maker Baker or something, whatever it's called. But it's the, ch the chick from Crybabies in it the mom um not the mom the yeah the mom well was it his aunt i can't remember her name i can't remember her name johnny depp's mom in that or aunt or whatever she was that chick i can't think of her name right now but she's in it that movie's a trip it's messed up um <laughs> but i watched that um and i think that's it <laughs> I've been talking for so long not even about yarn y'all are used to it right it's okay I know I lost some followers like my last episode like was it because I was like talking about how I felt <laughs> or was it just not enough yarn I don't know I ramble this is what I do <sighs> anyway I should end this yes <laughs> let me show you one last thing one last thing and then I'm out not yarn related, but it is movie related, so I'm allowed. What happened was I ordered this and then the UK postal system got hacked. So it took a while to get here, but it is finally here. It's Ludo. Look at the detail. I will list the link to the artist here, but it's a pastel drawing artist. This is a print of one of their pastel prints. And they have a couple more I'm gonna get. They also do commissions. I have some thoughts. They have a lot of uh, Bowie prints, but they have one of uh, a Skeksy that I want. I think it's the Chamberlain. Yeah, they have one of the Chamberlain that I would have ordered too. But I'm going to wait a little bit because like I said, this took forever to get to me because of the um, postal hack. Um, what do hackers get by hacking these things? Like, you just want to see the world burn? Is that is that the deal? Like, what if people are like waiting on medicine or something and you like mess with the postal service so they can't get their meds? Like, do these people think these things through or are they just like, oh, this is fun. Let's hack into this people anyway Ludo <laughs> Ludo next to David Bowie is my favorite labyrinth character because you know Ludo friend and people picked on him 
because he was different and tall. <laughs> I identified with Ludo. I can't talk to rocks, but I could talk to animals back in the day and Ludo was my friend. So I got a picture of Ludo because he's my favorite. Look at that face. How do you not love that face? Look at that face. How do you not love Ludo? And Clay Monster Pottery just did another release of those and I did not buy one. Be proud of me. <laughs> I restrained myself. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, this was a lot of rambling. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Happy knitting. Bye, y'all.